Hi, this is Almir Oosthuizen with Cape Town Emergency Medicine and this is part 3 in our video series on rapid sequence intubation. In this part, we will demonstrate the actual sequence of rapid sequence intubation. The first thing after your equipment has been checked and your bedside equipment is checked and connected to the patient would be to pre-oxygenate the patient. To pre-oxygenate a spontaneously breathing patient, simply connect them to a high flow oxygen mask such as this non-rebreathing mask and wall oxygen and make sure that they are breathing high concentration oxygen for 3 to 5 minutes. In a patient with inadequate ventilation, assist their ventilation with a ventilation device such as the self-inflating bag valve mask device for approximately 8 vital capacity breaths. Once the patient has been pre-oxygenated, you can proceed with the induction and paralysis of the patient. Administer the induction and paralysis agent in short succession to each other. You could do this yourself or ideally ask an assistant to do this for you. Administer the induction agent. Followed by the paralyzing agent. And finally a saline flush. Keep your oxygen source on the patient, but without actively breathing for them, await sedation and paralysis to be complete. Once the patient is paralyzed, remove the oxygen mask or other oxygen source from their face, take the laryngoscope in your non-dominant hand, position the patient gently, and slide the blade of the laryngoscope into the right side of the mouth, deflate, deflecting the tongue to the left. Gently advance the laryngoscope blade along the tongue, pulling in the direction of the handle, taking care not to tilt, pulling in the direction of the handle. As you advance and pull the tongue up, you'll visualize the vocal cords. Remove the ET tube from the sterile packing, advance it into the mouth and through the vocal cords, the vocal cords lying between the tube's vocal cord markers. Remove your laryngoscope and note the depth of insertion, 22 centimeters at the front teeth in this case. Maintain control of the tube and inflate the cuff. You would now attach your secondary detection device, in this case a CO2 calorimeter detector, and then your ventilator device to the tube and then you would confirm position of the tube. Classic five-point auscultation can be performed by an assistant, or an assistant can take over control of the airway while you do the auscultation itself. For demonstration purposes, I will now let go of the tube to demonstrate five-point auscultation. Please remember that in reality, you would not do this and you would not relinquish control of the airway itself. Five-point auscultation with a stethoscope follows a sequence of the left axilla, the right axilla, listening for air entry, the epigastrium, listening for the gurgling of air bottles that will follow on esophageal intubation, and then a final confirmation of equal air entry. If clinical confirmation and secondary confirmation shows that you have had successful placement of your endotracheal tube, you can now secure the tube in place connect your patient to your ventilator and proceed with standard post-intubation care. There are many different ways to secure an endotracheal tube to a patient, including tape and tie techniques and commercial devices. I will now demonstrate one technique using a piece of tape that you tie in a specific way. Again, for the purposes of this demonstration, I will remove the ventilation device from the patient's tube in real life you would not do so, but continue ventilations throughout. Cut a standard piece of tape, about a meter to a meter and a half long, and then it goes slightly lopsided in length. Put the loop around and feed through itself. Seat it at the depth and tighten it around the tube to make sure that it is secure. You should now be left with a short end and a long end. Pass the long end of the tape underneath the patient's neck and tie a simple bow knot to the side of the patient's face. 
tube is now held secure. A bite block or similar device is handy to prevent the patient from biting and obstructing the airway. If a specific bite block is not available to you, you could consider inserting an oropharyngeal airway. We recommend selecting one size smaller that would normally be used, as really the oropharyngeal airway is only serving as a bite block in this case. Insert the oropharyngeal airway as per usual, and make sure that the oropharyngeal airway is removed and changed for a bite block as soon as possible, as prolonged insertion of an oropharyngeal airway in a ventilated patient is associated with tissue destruction and ventilator associated pneumonia. And that's it, the mechanics of rapid sequence intubation.